Thank you. I don't have to switch on anything. Eh? <coughs> Very good. Good mic. <laughs> yes. Uh, occasionally, I have a little bit of a phlegm in my throat, so excuse me. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is my opening slide nowadays because people have been using the material that I've worked together to put together for what do you call it? Pleasurism. <laughs> Claiming it to be their own. And that's not right. Yeah? So, I don't mind you using it and uh, giving proper acknowledgement. Yeah? At the source. And giving God the glory and the honor. Yes. Because every teaching, every sermon, every message that I prepare, I seek the Lord. And for a long time. And my wife will tell you, prepare a message over days and weeks for one message. So I thank God that although sometimes the topic may seem for, uh, sound familiar, but it's always something fresh from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because Jesus said when the Spirit comes, He will be our teacher. And He will teach us all things. Bring to remembrance the things that Jesus taught us. Hallelujah. So shall we pray. Father, I thank you. For this opportunity again, hide me behind the cross, Lord. Let me be your vessel, your mind, your heart, your spirit, your voice. May the people be blessed by what you were to say to them, to touch their hearts, and strengthen their faith, and bless them in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're all familiar. I've got a short time, so I'm going to go straight to the message. We are all familiar with uh, the story of Joseph. Yeah. Let me see. Yes, Joseph. Uh, but I think I'm trying to make it bland. Uh, come into your uh, scheme, your not scheme, your your theme of vocation or calling. Yeah. And 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 I think Joseph's life is a remarkable thing. It, it is something that we can derive so much understanding of. Uh, how God works in our lives. As we study the life of Joseph, the journey that Joseph took, it was a difficult journey. It was something he never planned. It was something he never asked God for. Yeah. <laughs> when I say that, I, I'm reminded of myself, but never mind. Uh, because, honestly, I never thought I'd be ever preaching in City Mission Church. <laughs> This is a privilege and a joy for me every time I come here. Thank you to the elders for this great invitation and privilege. All right, so Joseph's life presents, with, presents to us many lessons we can learn. Yeah? Uh, not too long ago, a sister in the insurance line, some, quite a few of you are in the insurance line, uh, called me up and asked me a question. Which vocation or which job Shall I choose? She's already in that line. She, said, she got two offers. One offers good salary. Uh, um, she's not too sure of, of the scope of work, uh, but she says she can probably blend and uh, adjust and work into what they want. And the other one is not so good to pay, but she knows the people there. And, and, and to her... It looks like and it will offer more time for her to spend with her family. Okay? So she asked me, which one do you think I should choose? I gave her a very simple answer. I said, which job offers you greater opportunity to serve the Lord, to be a blessing? Don't look at the money. Yeah? Uh, and she said, but, 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 you know, the money is good. <laughs> Isn't that typical of Singaporeans? I mean, including myself. Yeah, but I said, if you consider this a vocation, then you take the money. If you consider it something that God would call you into to fulfill His purpose, take the other one. So finally, she made the right choice and I praise God that she's been a blessing where she is now and 
you know, although the, the job is tough, but she says, you know, I, I know that God is using me in this place, in this uh, time to, to touch and bless lives around here. So I said, you see? And then it's true with Joseph's life. He never believed and he never thought he would ever end up in Egypt in the first place. Yeah? So let's uh, look at a summary of his journey. He was an interesting character. He was his father's favorite. Now, parents don't play favorite with their children. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Yeah? You end up with a lot of uh, conflicts between or, or, you know, sibling rivalry, unnecessary. But he was Jacob's favorite. And I think Jacob carried it forward from, what his, uh, from his personal experience. Remember? He was his mother's favorite, and, and his mother helped him to win over the blessing of Isaac. And finally, he had to run away into Laban, uh, into uh, Haran, and all that stuff. You know the story. So Jacob had a favorite son. Why? Because he was Rachel's firstborn. Rachel was Jacob's, uh, for you who are not familiar, Rachel was uh, the one that Jacob actually wanted to marry Yeah, when he approached his father-in-law. But his father-in-law tricked him into marrying somebody else and all that. So, but he worked and worked and persevered to marry Rachel. But Rachel was not uh, uh, fruitful in bearing any children for him for quite a long time. So if you look at the, Jacob's life, he actually had four wives in the end, you know. <laughs> yeah. After Leah, he married two other women, and they all were fruitful in bringing him children. And uh, Jacob ended up with a family of, he was born into a family of 12 brothers. And when he finally came, he was such a joy to, to Jacob that Rachel gave him a son, and that was his favorite. Of course, Benjamin followed later. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we find that Jacob, uh, no, Joseph had preference over many things. And one of the important things that's mentioned in the Bible is Jacob made him a beautiful coat of many colors. That is very unusual. Yeah. Uh, and, and none of the other 11 brothers got anything, you know. <laughs> so so the, it ends up with what? Jealousy. Yeah. Made the brothers very jealous. Now, is it working? Okay. Things became very bad when Joseph had two dreams. Yeah? Those of you who are familiar with the story, one story is, <clears throat> one of his dreams is that he, he and his brothers were, were harvesting sheaves of wheat and then he said that the, the brothers' 11 sheaves bowed down to his sheaves of of, of which, which stood up straight. Now, I don't believe there's no evidence that showed that uh, Joseph understood this dream. Okay? And I believe that was why he was so happy to share this dream with his brothers. I mean, if we had a similar dream like this, which concerns our brothers and sisters, we would probably keep it a secret. Yeah. I would, anyway. You know, I, I don't want to create problems with my siblings. Yeah. And the other dream was that, what? He, not only, he wasn't a star or a moon. His father and mother were the moon and the stars. A uh, moon and, uh, and the sun. And the 11 brothers were 11 stars. And they were all bowing down to him. Personally, Joseph. Wow. Now, <clears throat> I don't, I don't believe Joseph knew what he was dreaming about or what the, those dreams meant. Okay? Because it wasn't up to him. It was even up to his brothers and his, and his, and his parents who eventually interpreted the dreams for him. Yeah. You look at the verses yeah, which describes this incident. You know, every time he mentioned a dream, I mean, why would you mention such dreams to the people involved? Anyway, he was very innocently doing this, not understanding uh, what he was dreaming about, what God had, him, uh, had for him in the future. Yeah. But it led to 
four things which I, I want to speak about today. The four P's, the pit, Potiphar, prison, and palace. <clears throat> With his four incidences in these situ four situations, we will pick up many lessons, but I've chosen seven, all right? Uh, and and uh, let's, let's see what will uh, we glean out of this. The first thing is that Joseph's dream was much greater than his, what he ever imagined possible. I mean, being the favorite son, I guess, when, when, when Jacob passes away, he would probably get a very favorable or favorite portion of the inheritance. Yeah, that, that is quite normal. I, I experienced it in my family when my father passed away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the favorite always gets most. most. Even though it's the, 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 the child is a woman, you know, in, in the Chinese custom, you know, the boys get more than the men, uh, than the than the than the girls. But in this case, in my family's case, the, my father's favorite was a girl. <laughs> so you know what happened, yeah. So it was in the, probably a similar case with Joseph. He was spoiled. He was expecting something, and and he he was probably thinking to himself, "Wow." I'm going to be the most wealthy in my family. That's why they're all bowing to me. You know, you know, all, that, those thoughts might have crossed his mind. Yeah? Uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, he, he never knew what his dreams, dreams meant. It was only the father and the brothers which actually interpreted the dreams for him. Yeah, the brothers said, uh, where is it now? Okay. The, the, the brothers in uh, Genesis 37 Verse 8, let me see whether I have it in here. Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? You know, <laughs> and, and, and uh, of course, this must have even stunned Joseph. Said, uh, I, I never thought of that. I never intended to rule over you. And then when his father got the dream about even the sun and the moon bowing to Joseph, uh, the father uh, said, in fact, the father rebuked him. How can you talk like this? You are my son. You know, what is this dream? The father asked, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? In 37 verse 10. I think that must have shocked Joseph himself. I mean, he didn't expect that. He didn't even thought such a thing would happen. But his family actually had to interpret the dream. He wasn't aware of the dream. But, you know, this, this is just like us. The things that God has prepared for Joseph, God has also prepared for us. In Ephesians uh, 2.10, which is one of my favorite verses, which says, you know, people, uh, people like to quote 2.9, which says, by grace, you are, uh, by grace you are saved through faith and all that. Yeah. But verse 10 clearly tells us, for we are God's masterpiece. I like this New Living Translation. It describes work uh, or God's work as masterpiece in our lives. Yes, it is actually a masterpiece. What is a masterpiece? It's a one thing. It is a one kind of a thing. There is no duplicate. There is no uh, another copy like it. Nothing else like it. It was specially chosen, specially done by the master, created by the master. Friends, you and I, each one of us, is a special creation of God. A unique person with a unique purpose and a unique calling in our lives. Not just a vocation we would desire, a, a career we would, call, we would seek to, to run after, but we have a calling from God the moment we are saved. Because in the earlier uh, chapter, in, in chapter 1, uh, Paul describes us as being the foremost thought in God's mind, even before He created the earth. Wow! We thought, we thought in the beginning was the Word. Yeah? And in the beginning, God created Him. No, friends, in the beginning, you and I were only already in God's mind and purpose. Hallelujah! That is how special we are. That is why we are a masterpiece. And, and we can do the good things He has planned for us along. That which means, what? God has not only saved us for nothing, to just go to heaven, 
I, I never forgot uh, Reverend Fred Stewart's illustration in those early days, you know. He said, God did not call us to come to the altar, be safe, and then knock. Uh, he wished he could knock us, knock us on the head and send us to heaven straight away. <laughs> So that we won't backslide. <laughs> anyway, that, that was a funny illustration which I never forgot. And it, that was not the purpose of God saving us. He wants us to fulfill His plans and purpose for our life, which fits into His greater plan, His eternal plans, because He is the Alpha and the Omega. He will fit us into the great uh, 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 picture that He is painting, that, uh, that, 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 that He is uh, creating. You know, this whole purpose of salvation, the whole purpose of the creation of man. Okay, so Ephesians 3.20 tells us now, to now to him who is able to immeasurably, uh, do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine even. Wow. <laughs> I think we, we, we sometimes have great, um, I have five grandchildren and they have great imaginations. You know, you give them a stick and they will turn it into, I don't know what. One of them will turn it into a microphone and use a stick to speak into it and say all kinds of things. Another one will take the stick and put it to her ear and pretend that it is a handphone, mobile phone. <laughs> the, the, my, my grandchildren were born with mobile phone ear. You know? They never, never had that phone that goes... <laughs> which some of us are familiar with. Yeah, yeah. And they have great imagination. Even we have great imaginations. What would are you imagining your life to be? I remember when I was young, and, and thank God, I, he, 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 he brought me into a, born into a family of quite a rich family. And, and I was thinking, wow, if I get the inheritance from my father, you know, I'll imagine doing this. I'll imagine buying a piece of land for the church. I'll imagine financing the whole building. <laughs> what happened to all the imaginations? <laughs> God's plans are greater than our imaginations. Amen. Hallelujah. Even those things that I imagine, God said, nah, that is chicken stuff. I give you more. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, well, my personal testimony is that God used me to build a, a, a church from 20 people to more than a thousand in a matter of year, a few years. You know, in those days, the, I mean, the, maybe during the time of the charismatic renewal, you know, uh, and the Lord moved and used a young man. In fact, I was so young that the church had to wait for me to turn 21 before they can register the church. <laughs> Friends, we are all beyond 21 already. Lah. <laughs> God can use us, no matter how old or how young, if we are willing to be like Joseph. Okay. Whether we want to choose our vocation or God's calling. All right, so God has great plans for us, even more than what we expect. Number two, the lesson number two nothing can stop God's plans for you. Amen. I, I, I somehow this morning or that last night, I was going through my old messages I sent to some, somebody to encourage somebody. And I said, eh, Isaiah. These are the words of Isaiah, which says, nothing can stop God's plan for you. Hallelujah. Be assured. Because if you choose God's calling rather than your vocation, nothing can stop what God wants to do in your life. Joseph's brothers thought they could destroy Joseph's dreams, right? By selling him into slavery. Genesis 37, uh, 20, well, if you read with me, let's kill him and throw him into one of the pits. The pits is usually a dry well. A well, you know, they have to dig, dig many wells in the desert to, to extract water to live, to survive. And, and so one of the wells, many of the wells maybe have dried up. And so they, they wanted to throw him in. Kill him first and then throw him in. Then they say, they claim, you know, then we will see what will become of his dreams. <laughs> Not his dreams, like God's dreams for him. Amen. When God has a dream for you, nothing can stop you. Yeah. God has plans which we do not even realize. I mean, can you imagine Joseph facing this situation? He says, that's the end of me. That's the end of my life. 
Why did God give me all those strange and funny dreams of people, my father, my, my, my brothers all bowing to me? What does it all mean? Yes. Friends, in fact, what the brothers were doing was facilitating the fulfillment of God's calling upon Joseph's life. Yes. If not for that, Joseph would not have been sold as a slave in Egypt. And he would not have become he would not have gone into prison, first of <laughs> And then he would not have gone into the palace as the second strongest, most powerful man in Egypt. He, that time, Egypt was the, the main uh, what, empire of those days uh, in the then known world. <coughs> we don't know what's happening in China. Huh? Maybe China had a more powerful thing. <laughs> anyway, but remember the cross? What happened? Satan thought that he would put an end to God's salvation plan by sending Jesus to the cross, moving the people to send him to the cross. But what was he actually doing? He was facilitating. He was turning this, what he wanted as a disaster into God's greatest plan of salvation for the world. For God so loved the world. Yeah, he sent his only begotten son. God's divine will and plan. Every resistance that seems to work against us, against God's plan, what we think is God's plan, is actually a stepping stone of God. When he will bring us to the next level, to the next experience yeah, of, of, of his, uh, his plans and purpose for our lives. Obstacles may delay, but they can never deny the fulfillment of God's plan for your life. Yes. Why? Because God will cause everything, all things, Romans 8.28 says, not some things, but all things. What, what we consider, we would seem to us as good or bad, doesn't matter. It's all good. It's all good in God's purpose and God's eyes. Yeah? Because all things will work together for our good, for God's good purpose. For us, is we continue to love Him and we live according to His purpose, His calling, not our vocation. Yes. What did Joseph think? Oh, I'm going to be great in my family. No, God says your family will be great. It will depend on you. You will end up greater in the land of Egypt. Same thing. When the Lord blessed me with the church, 1,000 plus, I, and we had 10 pastors, you know. <laughs> More than CMC. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I said, God, this is it. You have called me to this. That was my idea, my vocation, my desire to serve the Lord in this way. But God said, no, I'm going to bring you out of this church. That stunned me. That really stunned me for a long time, for a few years. I said, how can this be? I gave the best years of my youth to Emmanuel Assembly, to build a little 20, church of 20 people in a little corner terrace house into this huge five-story complex in Upper East Coast Road. How can the fruit of my labor, God, how can I lose out on the fruit of my labor? This is, how can you move me out of my church? You see the problem? My church. My idea, my vocation. God said, this is not my calling for you. Leave this church. And I thank God for people like Elder Jun Lai and Sister Flo, who God used. Not they, they are knowing, no, they didn't even know. They, they were like my brothers who wanted to pour, throw me into the pit. <laughs> yeah, and they, they somehow sent me to Israel, my pit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wife and I went there and wondering, what are we doing in Israel? I mean, that's the desire of every Christian to go there to, to the Holy Land. Yeah, but what was God's purpose of sending us there? Then that we found God's purpose for us. God confirmed, unless you let go of your past, you cannot enter into God's glorious future. To some of you here, I think this is a message for you. Is there something you hold on dear to, you, to your heart, your desire, your ambition? Maybe God has a different plan for you. 
And can, I can assure you God's plan is immeasurably more than what you can imagine. Hallelujah. Yeah, and as uh, Elder Jehu has mentioned, you know, God turned my obedience of leaving that church, which I was so proud of, yeah, into a ministry which became worldwide. I, was, I, began, I began to minister to so many countries, so many different denominations and churches, even in Africa and even in the Middle East. In the middle of Muslim countries, I was holding crusades. Now, something which people say, impossible. I thought it was impossible too. When I saw that big banner at the airport, first time in the United Arab Emirates, my big photo, my big face was there. <laughs> you know, come and experience the, the miraculous power of healing. So, huh? In UAE, will I ever leave that place alive? <laughs> and it was advertised in their national newspapers and their national TV. I said, God, you are God. Truly, you are God. Amazing. Then I asked the organizer, you know, how is this possible? And you said, first time. I mean, no other people have done it. They said, no, you are the first one. Why? <laughs> i tell you why. Thank God you're Singaporeans. <laughs> they said they tried to bring Benny in. Government said no. They tried to bring in Reinhard Bonke. The government said no. They proposed Alan Chan from Singapore. <laughs> the government said yes. <laughs> Hey, we are innocent and you know, small country, little red dot, uh, harmless people. Uh, uh. Praise the Lord. Uh. <laughs> and our, and our, our flag has got a crescent and stars. <laughs> Maybe they thought, they thought we were a Muslim country. I don't know. <laughs> but God, in His plan, in His purpose, He has prepared great things for us. I tell you, we had a wonderful three days in the three major cities in UAE. Thousands, thousands came to our crusades. Yeah, there were definitely government agents there. But I, I managed to leave and survive, come to Singapore and <laughs> preach to you guys. <laughs> so during what seemed to be, you know, the trials for Joseph face, it is always, it is always God's opportunity to do something, to demonstrate, to reveal himself, to reveal his faithfulness and reveal his power. Yes, during what seemed like a series of unfortunate events for, for Joseph, God showed up in each instance. So I'm going to use these three piece, uh, four piece again, pit, Potiphar, prison and palace. And look at it. In the pit, in January, uh, in, January in Genesis, <laughs> getting older, saying the wrong things at the wrong time and he's sending the wrong wrong uh, file to Elder Jun Lai. <laughs> I prepared six questions and he received three. I said, huh? <laughs> wrong file. Okay, in the pit, in Gen uh, Gen Genesis 37, we read, now then, come and let's kill him, you know, in the pit, where, where God, the brothers wanted to kill him, and throw him into one of the pits. But what? God made sure that Reuben was there. Reuben was the eldest. He said, he heard this and he rescued Joseph out of their hands saying, let's not take his life. Yeah. You see, God will always place somebody in your life. Yeah. So never feel alone. You're never alone. Sometimes we are in a situation of trial and testing. God, I'm all alone. Nobody's with me. Nobody cares. No. God cares. And God will make sure that there is somebody there for you. Yeah. God will work through somebody. Don't expect always an angel to come and deliver you and <laughs> give you the answer and resolution. No. God will use people, you and me, yeah, in somebody's life. Okay. So, in the pit, God was had Reuben ready. 
Now, in Potiphar's, I want us to read through this whole passage because it's such an interesting passage. And it teaches us so many lessons. <clears throat> Potiphar's house was an interesting experience, right? That was one of his, Joseph's up experience, mountain experience. Joseph was in the valley, in the pit. Now he's gone up. What he thought was the end of his life, being sold away in a foreign country as a slave. What else have you got? But you know, God made sure that he is sold to the correct household, to the correct person, the correct master. Friends, out of our trials and difficulties, God will make sure that we are placed in the right position. Every one of us. Because if we are in God's calling, we are obedient to his calling, nothing feels, nothing is wrong. You'll be in the right household and you'll be serving the right master. Like Joseph, the Lord was with Joseph. You see, he was in the will of God. He had, you know, I think by now he had given up hope of all his ideas about being great in his father's family. Yeah, and, and, and probably by now he says, God, I surrender. <laughs> I don't know what you have in mind for me. I'm going to be a slave. How can I fulfill those two dreams you gave me? But God was with Joseph so that Joseph prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. You know, God set up ambience, situation, circumstances for us for prosperity is greater than what we think prosperity is. Yes. It is not just material prosperity, but God's prosperity is shalom. A complete and whole, a, 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 a prosperity of wholeness in every aspect of our life, physically, spiritually, emotionally, every aspect. That is God's plan for us. Okay, so when his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave Joseph success in some things, in everything he did, Hallelujah. You want to be successful in everything? <laughs> be in the will of God. Be in His calling. Don't seek after your own agenda. Yeah. And God will make sure that other people will recognize God's blessing and hand upon our lives. Yeah. And so Joseph found favor in his eyes, his master's eyes. Of course, he had to find favor in God's eyes first. And then he would find. That is what happens. Yeah, when we find favor in other people's eyes, that means God has, we have found favor in God's eyes. Yeah, and he became his attendant, Potiphar put him in charge of his household. Now, this is interesting. This is the training that, that, that our friend Joseph is going, beginning to go through to become a leader. His first training is in somebody's house. Run a household of an important man, probably with other servants. Yes put him in charge of his household and trusted him to care everything he owned. From that time, he put him in charge of his household on all that he owned. The Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Friends, wherever you go, just don't think of our own prosperity and our own success. It's going to spread. We're we, we going to rub shoulders with people and when we rub shoulders with them, God is going to make sure that our success that He gives us will also be their success and their prosperity. I don't know about you, but wherever you, God has put you in, whether it's school and work and the community, you know, wherever you are, you will bring success. You will bring blessing. We are blessed for what? To be a blessing. Hallelujah. That's Singapore's calling, you know. We are being blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the blessing of the Lord was upon everything that Potiphar had. So Potiphar left uh, everything he had in Joseph's care. Joseph was in charge, except, the <laughs> except for the food we ate. Huh? So he, he probably had some uh, special taste for certain kinds of food, like, you know, uh, chasi or siwa. Huh? And... Uh, and uh, that one, that one Joseph cannot touch. Ah, he must always get that. Okay. <clears throat> so in Potiphar's house, let's pick up some point, pointers here. That's why I, want, I wanted us to read that whole passage. 
Verse 2 says, The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Okay? So we know that he prospered because he was in God's plan. He, God was with him. So never feel that you cannot succeed as long as you are in God's plans. His master saw the Lord was with him. See? When you succeed and when I succeed, people notice. Yes. I mean, especially in Singapore, you know. They only look at successful people, what they think is successful people. Anyway, so we, we, we do not, God will, not, will make sure that our success and our, His blessing is not covered up. You know, the Bible says that we are not meant to be hidden in a bush. We are supposed to be placed on a hill to be seen, to shine forth the light of God and His success and His blessing. The Lord gave Him success in everything He did. Joseph found favour. Yeah, I'm, I'm repeating this from what I mentioned earlier even. Now from time he put him in charge of his household of all that he owed. You know, God will sometimes place us in such a position. He came in as a slave, mind you. A Hebrew slave, which is actually looked down upon by Egyptians. I'll show you a verse which shows that the Egyptians would not even sit at the same table with a Jew, with a Hebrew, to eat somewhere else. I mean, some of our, our, our employees treat our house helpers like that. You don't sit with us, you sit there in the kitchen. <laughs> that was how the Egyptians considered the Hebrews. Low class, or you're a slave. That's what you are. All right, you don't know, you're not the same standard, as the same level as Egyptians. The Lord blessed the household of Egypt because of Joseph. Yeah, God will always place us in a position greater than we expect. And when God does that, He will bless all those people and all the circumstances around us. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had. That's why Jesus says that we are the salt and the light of this world. Yeah. I mean, you can see what's happening right now with the 377A. Who's standing up for the truth, for honesty, and for the purity that the Bible teaches? I think it was, it was Flo, right, who went to see her MP. Was it Flo who went to see her MP on Friday or Saturday? Yeah. And she was waiting for the MP, according to her, 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 her message, huh? And she was waiting to see them. And she noticed some people playing around on the playground. And one of them was a, 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 a mainland Chinese lady who had come, I think, become a Singapore citizen or PR or something like that, and with a, a, a child. And the, 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 the Chinese national asked us, uh, Flo, why, why are you waiting here with all these people? He said, we're going to see the MP. Why are you going to see the MP? Then Flo explained to her the 377A and what we are, our appeal is and all that. And you know, the, 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 the Chinese national lady was shocked. The, huh? There's such a thing in Singapore. I mean, she said, I came to Singapore because I saw Singapore as a place to live an honest life. A clean country. No corruption. And they had high moral standards. Why is your government considering removing this? It will break down your moral standards. Hey, a foreigner who has come to Singapore can see this. Lah. Friends, let's pray, okay, for Singapore. Okay, we pray for other nations, huh? <laughs> Even we pray for Jerusalem, but let's pray for Singapore. We are to be the salt and the light wherever we are, especially in our own country. All right, our trials are God's opportunities after the pit after the pit, after Potiphar's house, number three, in prison. Of course, you know what happened. Uh, Potiphar's wife was a bit, mm, she got interested in, in Joseph, but Joseph was not interested in her. You know, they say, uh, what a woman's scorn is greater than hell, something like that. <laughs> so he scorned that woman. You know, she turned around and told a different story to Potiphar, and Potiphar put poor Joseph in jail. And, and Joseph came down from that mountaintop where he thought, this is my life. This is the prosperity that God has promised me. You know, I will live in this house and be the, the chief and, and, and the, 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 the one that's running the whole house. Potiphar is left to me. 
But then he found himself in prison. Friends, sometimes it's like that, huh? At the height of our, like, uh, what we seem to be our life, the, uh, the zenith of our ambition. Friends, that is our ambition. That is our, what we consider our vocation. But God's calling is greater. Come down to the prison. Yes, come down to prison. I don't know. My prison was leaving my church with nothing. Even the church I built did not support me. Yes. And I said, God, what's going to happen? Who's going to be with me? Who's going to work with me? Who's going to support me? Who's going to you know, be in my team? Where, where is the support coming from? And, and the Lord said, bring together 20 people who would pray with you. That's all. That's all. You know, prayer warriors usually don't give very much. <laughs> they give their time, their heart, their passion. They share with you yeah, your passion. Yeah, praise the Lord for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but we need people who think. And out of the blue, you know, people just came and said, Helen, you're starting this ministry personally on a personal basis. Here is a donation to help you start off. Or somebody says, we will support you every month. Not the church, but anyone else. But personally, Christians. Yeah? Okay, so the Lord was with him. He showed the kindness and, and, and granted favor even in your time of your prison experience. When you thought, that's it. That's the end for my life. God will never bring about what I've dreamed. That was probably my dream, lah, my vocation, but not God's calling. But wrong. As long he was true to God. You know, in, in Potiphar's house, he stood, he stood true to what he believed was the right thing to do. Yeah, I will show you later another verse which says that he did not sin, uh, he did not want to sin against Potiphar, but he said he did not want to sin against God. His standards of moral value was God's standard, not what men say is right or wrong. Okay, so the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison and he was made responsible for all that was done there. I mean, in the first place, <clears throat> if you read carefully the, the, the verse before this, Joseph was placed in a special prison. He wasn't placed, placed in an ordinary prison of ordinary criminals. He says he was in the king's prison where the king would punish his own servants, his own workers, his own palace staff. Joseph was placed there, special. So friends, we are still special. We are God's masterpiece. God will never leave us into ordinary situations where we would just disappear. Friends, God has a special place for every one of us in every situation. Even the prison was a special prison. Yes, because there, the warden was... One kind of a warden, huh? Getting a slave to take, take over. Maybe he wanted to enjoy himself, take an easy life. Yeah, but he placed Joseph there in charge of everything. That was the second lesson in leadership training for Joseph. First party, first house. Yeah, in all the prosperity. And then in the prison where there's nothing but adversity and pain. What does that tell us? God prepares us for what is ahead for us if we remain in His calling. So you remember what happened when, 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 when Pharaoh had his dream and then Egypt uh, experienced seven years of famine but before that, seven years of abundance. Abundance was Potiphar's house training. Famine was the prison training. Yes. So God wants us in the right place to fulfill, to fulfill what is ahead of us. All right. So he was made responsible and Joseph, because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. All right. So Joseph met Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker in prison. Ah. So it was a special prison where Joseph was supposed to meet the right people. You see how God's hand works? That's where Romans 8.28 is true. For God works all things. 
God works all things for our good to fulfill His purpose if we remain in His will. Okay, so that's where he met the cupbearer and the baker. And that's where I think he began to operate in the gifting that God gave him to, op to, to interpret dreams. I don't know about, there's not much detail about his experience or his, his relationship with those, these two people. But I'm sure his relationship would have been much more than just one time meeting, telling, uh, receiving what they, they dream and telling them what they dream about. No, I think it, there was a relationship between these two people and Joseph and enabled Joseph to develop the gift that God has given to him to interpret dreams. And he was able to interpret accurately. The, big, the baker was lifted from, from <laughs> I like the word in some, some of the uh, interpretations. Of the Bible. Joseph uh, says the baker would be lifted. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> His head was lifted and he was hung to death. And Joseph said that, however, the cup bearer will also be lifted to a high place by the sight of Pharaoh. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes uh, you know, God puts us in a place where we right, meet the right people, develop our skills and gifting that God has given to us, and then that led to Joseph get going into the palace. Of course, the cup bearer forgot about Joseph for a while, until the, the, the Pharaoh had <clears throat> these great dreams and then nobody could interpret. Then the cupbearer remembered, ah, this joker in prison. I mean, joker of J, so Joseph also Joseph. And, and, and he said, this guy can interpret dreams. Let's call him. I mean, if he, he interpret wrongly, ah, also never mind. Ah, a prisoner or what? Okay, so Pharaoh said to Joseph, Sin, after Joseph has successfully interpreted his dreams. No, after interpretation, uh, the dreams have not come true yet, you know. But because he was so ab able to give the details of the dreams so carefully that it impressed Pharaoh. He said, since God has made all, his, all this known to you, not to any of his magicians or his advisors, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. Wow. This is coming from a heathen king. Huh? And he could see all this in Joseph. Friends, even non-believers can see God in you and me. Yes, if we are faithful to him and we obey him and live a life that is according to his standards. Yes. I, I, I never forgot this incident. <clears throat> I don't know whether you have heard this illustration before, if you have, uh, forgive me. Uh, part of my ministry the last few years before COVID was going out holding healing campaigns, evangelistic and healing campaigns, and many people, thousands will get healed and saved and all that. Okay. Uh, but not at, not on Reinhard Bonke's level, uh, maybe about 10%. So, anyway, I had gone to this place and, and miracles happened. And many, hundreds of the the Hindus became followers of Jesus Christ. And miracles of healing was rampant. Hundreds of people were getting healed instantly. Not taking months, no. Instantly, eyes open, people deaf, people hurt and all that. God was there. Yes, just like Joseph experienced. God was with me. And God gave success. Okay, so after that I left the place. And about one or two years later, my, uh, this, this pastor who brought me there to, the, to that uh, tea plantation met me again and he said, hey, when are you coming back to this tea plantation? I said, usually I, don't, I try not to go to the same place more than once because India is so big. India is such a huge country. There are so many places they need to hear the gospel and see God's miracle power. So, so I said, why, why are you asking me to go back to the same place? No, I met this, the, the pastor said, I met this a uh, Hindu leader, she's a woman, but she's, she's a leader a Hindu among the Hindus there in that, in that thing. And she asked me this question. I met her and she said this, when is Jesus coming back? So my, 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 my friend, the friend pastor, pastor friend said, we don't know, the Bible does not say when Jesus is coming back. 
I mean, only God the Father has the has the schedule. <laughs> it's not in the Bible about schedule, but God knows when. <clears throat> so the, the woman, the Hindu woman, no, 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 no. I don't mean Jesus of the Bible. I mean that that, that short Jesus. So sometimes uh, it's good uh, to have white hair, to be short, different from other people. Uh, they can identify. This woman did not even know my name. This woman did not even know where I came from. Huh? But all she knew was that when she saw the things I did and she heard the things I, I preached, she reminded her of Jesus. That's Jesus doing those things. That's Jesus preaching. Can others see Jesus in our lives? When we are in the calling of God, they see not only Elder Jehu, but they see Elder Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. Thank you. You know, here's a good reminder. Anyway, <laughs> so we see that in the palace, uh, you shall be in charge of everything. Pharaoh said what? I hereby put you in charge of my whole land. Wow! Did Joseph ever believe he would be in this position doing this thing? Never. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, integrity and obedience in God's eyes is so important. At the height of his career, Joseph was tested, yeah? Though unjustly of promise, yeah, this is the verse I mentioned earlier. When Potiphar's uh, wife tempted Joseph, Joseph said that, what, what he says, how can I do this, such a wicked thing, against my master? No. How can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Our moral standard should not be based on what man considers right or wrong. It should be higher. It should be God's standards. Yeah. So I can I think I guess that's why so many of us are fighting this situation of repeal. <laughs> Colossians 3:23 clearly tells us whatever you do, work at with all your heart. How? As working for the Lord by his standards for his purpose, not for human masters, not for human agendas. Not for what man was going to accomplish or making sure that we get, we continue to get foreign investments. No friends. God's standards. We shall not yield. God's standards, not human standards. Not what human people think is the best thing for our country, but what God considers the best for Singapore. Sorry, I don't want to be, better not be political. Otherwise, <laughs> this thing is being recorded, right? <laughs> Live some more. Huh? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I hope Mr. Lee is not watching. <clears throat> okay, thank God. Now, faithfulness brings God's promotion. I tell you, if you are faithful, God blesses us. Faithful to His calling, faithful to what He wants to do. Joseph did not ascend to this great position overnight. It took him 13 long years. You saw in the earlier slide, he was 17 when they threw him into the pit. But when Fraser, Fraser, Pharaoh called him out to the palace, he was 30 years old. 13 long years. Through it all, it was God's preparation. Sometimes, God delays and prepares us until we are ready. He who is faithful, Jesus, these are Jesus' words, who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. See? What you do now, how you do it now, with all your heart, with all faithfulness as unto the Lord, will determine how much further you go. Hallelujah. God's calling. Obey not our vocation, not our own desire. Matthew 25, 21, in the parable of the talents, which you know, the, 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 the rich man went away and gave some talents to his servants. He came back. He said, went to the servants who have uh, done well with the talents they were given. He said, well done, good and? 
not efficient, not clever in, 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 in investing in the stock market, but faithful servant in what you are supposed to be doing. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. That is what brings joy to the Lord. That is what brings a, a, a fulfillment of God's plan for our lives and for His great eternal plan. All right. So God knows when we are ready. Finally, number six, Joseph was born into a family of 12 brothers. But why was Joseph chosen of all people? God knew Joseph's heart. Heart is so important. It's not what you're capable of, not your position in life, not who you are as the elder brother. No, God knew that Joseph had a humble heart, obedient and forgiving. You know, sometimes we wonder, why did God choose Jacob uh, to become Israel? <laughs> I mean, people say Jacob the deceiver. <laughs> but God chooses the most unlikely people to serve him. You know, I have had this, this question two-word question to God so many times. Even I think this morning I got the same two-word question. Why me? Why me? I tell you, God knows our heart better than we do ourselves. Yes. He knows who will obey Him. Look at David's life, right? I mean, David's life is usually a life of sin, you know. <laughs> he feels so many times. He was even sent somebody to be killed. Took somebody's wife. Hey, I never did that. <laughs> neither I'm, I'm sure not neither did any one of you. And yet he was called what? A man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. God looks at the heart. Looks at your heart and my heart. Our heart's intention. God knew Joseph had a heart to be humble. In Genesis 45, he says... Finally, when the, all the <clears throat> family came before Joseph in, 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 in the Pharaoh's court in Egypt, this is what Joseph said. He finally realized what had happened in his life. He said, God sent me before you. He acknowledged God's plan in his life. God's calling was greater than his vocation to preserve a posterity for you in this earth and to save lives by a great deliverance. So now we know it was not you, my brothers, who's put me into the pit, who sent me here. It was God. It was God. God in your life, friends. God will bring us and advance us, promote us when we are ready. And finally, God will ensure, I can tell you, God will ensure that when we remain in His calling and His plan, He will ensure that it will be fulfilled. It will not fail. Nothing can stop God. Joseph never imagined he would rise to rule Egypt. Egyptians would refuse to eat. Ah, you read Genesis 43, 32, if you don't believe me. Yeah, they considered it an abomination for them to be sitting with a Hebrew for, for the meal. You know, Joseph had to be... Yeah, so, you know, Joseph had no idea that he would end up in Egypt doing this in this high position. Every, every stage of his journey, he had to be pushed First pushed out of the, of the pit. I mean, uh, he, he thought that was the end of his life in the pit, but he was pushed out of the pit, bought over by the, by the uh, Arabs, uh, traders, brought to Egypt. And then in Potiphar's house, he had to be pushed out of his post prosperity, his great position he was enjoying in Potiphar's house. God used Potiphar's wife to push him out into prison. And when he was in prison, he had to be pushed out of prison because he was the boss there. Yeah, number one man in prison, you know. Yeah, it was a great time for him, training under well, terrible people. But he, he had to be pushed out into the palace. Every stage of his life. So friends, we may not understand sometimes why we get into situations and circumstances. But God will make sure if we are faithful to rise to the next level. Amen. I've got six minutes left. Okay, according to Elder Jehu. Okay. <laughs> every hardship, every test, every event was in God's control. Hallelujah. To fulfill what? Joseph's, Joseph's <laughs> desire, agenda? No, but purpose, God's purpose for Joseph. Yes, First Thessalonians 5.24 says, He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Hallelujah. He will bring it to pass. Friends, trust in God. Yeah, how will he do it? 
Romans 8, 28 again. God will cause everything to work together to fulfill His purpose in our lives. When we are called according to His purpose, or I should be pointing here, yeah, according to His purpose, we remain in His purpose. All right, so the conclusion, see? I make it in time. Five minutes. Trust in God's purpose and process for your life. Amen. Sometimes we cannot see it. Really. When, when God said, leave Emmanuel, I said, huh? I said, God, say that again. I, I mean, I didn't say those, but that was, in my heart. that was in my heart. Are you sure or not? Did I hear you correct? I'm going to move you out of this church. But God, this is my church. Right? <laughs> Never call CMC your church, okay? <laughs> this is God's work, God's church. Amen. Okay, trust in God's purpose and process for you. Don't even if you don't understand many, you know my journey, I'm sure Joseph did not understand many things in Jesus along the journey. God tested his faithfulness. God tested his trust in him. And for 23 years, Joseph was alone. Yeah, besides that, 13 years, 13 years reaching, reaching the palace, he spent another 10 years before his family arrived in Egypt. So for 23 years, he was alone in Egypt. Can you imagine? Alone in a foreign country, nobody to call your buddy, your family, your friends, nobody to really give you moral support. Alone. To continue to be obedient. Under a different set of morals. Huh? Certainly he grew up in very corrupt situ situations. Yeah. And yet, he went through all those trials and hardship and experienced God's grace and mercy. To be able, when he saw his brothers, to finally say to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Did I bring about all this? Am I God that caused all this to happen? Did I plan all this? You think it was my, my desire, my ambition to reach Egypt and all that? No. Am I in the place of God? That's what he meant. You intended to harm me. Yeah, even you did not know what you were doing, he was telling his brothers. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so look out for God's hand on opportunities in every challenge because it will prepare you for the next upward step. step. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time. Praise your name. May your blessing be upon all these wonderful people as they learn to choose your calling rather than to chase after their own vocation. Amen. Thank you, Reverend.